In this video, we will again look at the derivative propagation of the solution to nonlinear systems of equations using various sensitivity methods, including adjoint sensitivities. With the difference that we now want to reformulate the Jacobians that we need at intermediary stages using the JAX deep learning framework by leveraging automatic differentiation to relieve us of the manual labor aspect of creating these Jacobians ourselves. Let's get started. Welcome to this new video. Make sure you watch the previous one where we used the handwritten Jacobians because we are going to use most parts of the code from last time, which is going to replace the essential parts. As said in the intro, the sensitivity methods we looked at, forward sensitivities as well as adjoint sensitivities, required us to compute additional Jacobian matrices of the residual vector function. So for instance, with respect to the input x, as well as with respect to the input theta. In our two-dimensional case, that we looked at here, we were able to derive that by hand and then implement it using NumPy. That is also possible for slightly larger matrices, but at a certain point it might become too hard or too error prone to do that oneself. Of course one could leverage computer algebra systems and this is also often done, but here we want to go the full route towards automatic differentiation. And in order to leverage JAX, we first have to change from NumPy to JAX NumPy, and that's the first thing we're going to do. So we will delete the import NumPy as NP statement and instead import JAX numpy as jnp and then we'll also need jax itself and now the linter already highlights a couple of errors here so we are now going to change numpy to jax numpy at each point in the file so let me do that for you and that is of course possible because jax numpy is to a large extent and drop and replacement for numpy and even the optimization root finding algorithm from scipy that we're going to use here will work with the jax numpy arrays so let me swap that out here so also in loss functional as well as here and then also in the linear solver since JAX NumPy also provides us with linear solvers. And then now if we try to run that, we will run into a first error, but let's try it anyways. So I will open up the file and then execute Python adjoined nonlinear system JAX Jacobians. And here we will get the error that the assignment destination is read only. And that refers to the fact that in JAX, in contrast to NumPy, arrays are immutable. That means they cannot be changed. However, we can use a trick in order to create a new array, which is slightly augmented. So we will have an error here. Remember when we had the finite differences, we had to loop over the parameters and in each iteration, we had to augment the parameter or one entry of it to then obtain a difference approximation. So in order to now get our theta augmented, we will say theta evaluation point at i dot set to theta evaluation point at i plus step length. What does that do? So this at set is a routine from JAX which creates a copy of the array and mutates the entry we want to be mutated. And here we want to copy the theta evaluation point which was our original theta parameter vector and then set at the i position so for instance, the zero of entry that we want to be the zero of entry plus the small augmentation. And the rest of the entries, so if we take the zero of then the first, two, second and third will stay the same. And this allows us to delete the lines before since this already creates a good copy for us. However, then we also have a second problem. Here also we do an assignment which is not valid in JAX but we can also handily replace that with the same at structure by saying this is equal to dj by d theta finite differences at index i dot set. But now we have to be a bit careful because here the bracket is not including the division by the step length. So I, I will introduce another bracketing, bring that here like this. And then we will divide that by the step length and then introduce another bracket such that the set operation is working smoothly. Then let's save the file and try to rerun it. And hopefully it works. So now it takes a little bit longer. And here we go. We have our output. We have again the 
gradient information, the derivative information together with the timing. And I also have the file from the last video here, which is unaltered. And if we run that file as well to get a comparison. So here I called it handwritten Jacobians. First of all, first observation, it's uh, way faster. Second one is that the derivatives are also slightly different. We don't see that much in the adjoint and forward sensitivities, but we see it more crucially in the finite differences. And that is because JAX by default uses single precision floating point numbers. And that is not the best to use for finite differences as those are highly dependent on numerical rounding errors. But we can force JAX to use double precision by updating the configuration and say jax.config.update and then say jax underscore enable underscore x64 being true. And then if we rerun the JAX Jacobian file, so this again takes a little longer. And after that, I will run the other file as well. Ah, okay, of course, I wrote that into the wrong file. How stupid of me. So this should be unaltered, but let's go back to the Jax Jacobians and then paste it in here. Well, hopefully now that works. Let's try it again. Here we go. So it runs again and then the handwritten Jacobians. You know, we see that the finite differences is closer to the finite differences in the others. They still differ by a bit, which is quite interesting to see here, which probably has a couple of reasons, but not too interesting for us at the moment. The overall theme, however, is that it's still almost pointing in the same direction. So that's good and it still matches more or less with the sensitivities we found by forward and the joint mode. And again, a note on the timing. So we will still see the overall theme that finite differences is the slowest, then forward and then a joint. And we see the same with the JAX NumPy implementation, although here we are getting in way larger orders of magnitude. And that is first of all caused by the fact that JAX has a larger overhead than NumPy. So for these smaller computations, we don't really get the acceleration of JAX yet. And second of all is that JAX relies on just-in-time compilation, which we are not doing here. So if you were to do the just-in-time compilation and then benchmarked the run after the JIT compile, you would get way better numbers here. Okay, but so far we haven't used any JAX Jacobians. Let's now do that. So we will now remove the del r by del x as well as the del r by del theta statements and instead of having them handwritten you'll know it's jax so we will have del r by del x is going to be jax dot jacobian on the residual and then we have to provide argnums which is because our function is taking two arguments because by default jax would always be computing it with respect to the zero so the first entry argument and that's also what we want here but i just want to make that more verbose and say that the del r by del x shall be a function which produces the jacobian of the residual with respect to the first entry jax is a framework for function transformations so it will take this function and it will return another function but instead of that one computing the residual it is computing the jacobian so we could call this function similar to what we had implemented before in the handwritten jacobians well then let's also do the del r by del beta by calling jax dot jacobian on the residual but here with respect to the next entry. And that's it for the Jacobians of the residual. Now we also need the Jacobian or the gradient information of the loss functional. I mean, here it's rather straightforward, but let's use automatic differentiation anyways. So let's have the del j by del x being jax dot Jacobian. Here we have to be a bit careful because in JAX the definition is that Jacobians only work for vector valued functions. So functions that at least map from a vector to a vector. But a loss functional here is a mapping from a vector to a scalar and the corresponding derivative information therefore is just the gradient or shorthand grad. And here let's plug in the loss functional. We don't have to consider this argnums because the loss functional only has one argument. Okay, let's save the file and then let's try to re-execute it by saying python adjoint 
non-linear system jacks Jacobians. And again, this runs for a bit and hopefully it works. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. Now we have some results again. And these are now using the Jacobians as produced by automatic differentiation. And if I expand the terminal by a bit, you see that the forward and the joint sensitivities are more or less the same that we get here. Whereas for the finite difference, we again changed a bit. And I believe that this is due to the fact that the Jacobian is also used in this root finding process and maybe at some point under the hood in the algorithm, the slightly different Jacobian entries due to automatic differentiation might be a bit troublesome. However, again, the overall direction of the finite difference gradient is sufficient such that it can be compared with the forward and the joint sensitivities. And again, let me highlight, so this is really helping us by a lot because if you remember writing down these Jacobians is first of all tedious and second of all also error prone. And the theme of automatic differentiation is that we only implement the forward computation and that is for the residual and also for the loss functional and each additional derivative information that is given by these forward computations can then be obtained using automatic differentiation. However, I have to say one thing here is that these Jacobians are dense matrices. So at certain points you might encounter residual function or general vector valued function that have so-called sparse Jacobians. And sparse refers to that not every entry is populated. And that's also what we've seen in the last video. So if I maybe go back to that one here and look at the Jacobian, we see that at certain points there are just zero entries. And if you have larger Jacobians, let's say 10,000 by 20,000 maybe, and a significant amount of entries are zero, then it becomes highly inefficient to use dense Jacobian matrices. And then we might be more interested in using so-called Jacobian vector products or vector Jacobian products. And that's what we're going to look at in the next video. A big thanks to all the Patreons of the channel. If you also want to support my vision of free education on these advanced mathematical topics, you find the link to the Patreon page down in the video description. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. There is more awesome content like this, more on the joints, automatic differentiation, more on Jax, maybe you're also interested in Julia. Here you will now see similar video as well as the playlist. I hope to see you in one of the next videos. <laughs>